Hey everybody, I want to talk about one of the lesser known upgrades that came with Logic Pro 11.2. Of course, there were a lot of really great things with the stem splitter and the long throw faders and a number of other things that came out. But this is one of those things that was a little bit lesser known in the release notes. And perhaps it's something that you didn't even know about. Uh, and that is the ability for patch merging to actually work in a little bit easier and a more efficient way. So patch merging, if you don't know what it is, is a function of our library and it allows us to decide which parts of a patch when you click on it in the library actually get moved onto the track itself. So let's click an instrument track and I'm gonna come down here to the bottom left-hand corner of the screen I'm gonna enable patch merging. And you'll see there's four different buttons here, MIDI effects, instruments, audio effects, and sends. Now these are the four different elements that can load with any patch. Sometimes, if you don't have this uh, adjusted and you load a number of different patches from the library, uh, you can easily pull out a number of different additional sends and auxiliary tracks. So if I open up my mixer, You'll see right now I've got uh, one reverb auxiliary and then another one that came from a patch at some point. But I'm gonna load just a couple more here. Let's do just some random things and we'll see if they load up. So this one, when I clicked on it, loaded bus five and bus six. And they pulled on two more reverbs. Let's do just another one here. And I'm gonna do horns, seven piece section, and oh, that one didn't actually come with any. So let's find one that does. There we go, another bus right there. And so you'll see we have another. So I just added three more auxiliary tracks with three sets of reverb uh, and EQs and all that stuff. I didn't even really want it because I'm gonna be mixing this myself. And so I wanna be able to put all those reverbs on myself. So I'm gonna undo all of these things that we just did. There we go. And we should have lost all those auxes. Okay, cool. So now if I come down to patch merging and turn off sends, if I were to select some of those same things, you'll see the instrument and the effects are loaded, but no sends are loaded and no additional reverb tracks are made. And so I can decide what things get loaded. I can say, I want you to do this without the audio effects. And so, and actually to be clear, it's not going to remove any audio effects that are there. It'll actually leave them, but it won't add them if I have a, a, a blank track. So this is a great way. If I actually had some audio effects that I liked with one of these, and then I can turn that off and choose a different instrument, but it keeps the same effects chain. It also means that if I have uh, a, a channel that I have a send on it to a reverb, uh, we'll just do this like that, and I choose another one, it's going to leave the reverb in place. So I won't change the reverb. So this is a great way to manage which things get loaded or preserved on your channels for each of those things. Now, up until 11.2, this was still here. This is a feature that's been there for a while. However, anytime we like chose a different track or if we came through and made a new track, this window would close and we'd have to come down and reopen it. Now, if once we open it in a project, it stays open all the way through all the work we're doing and it preserves the settings we're doing. That's a huge time saver and efficiency saver for those of us who use patch merging. And it just feels like that's how it should have worked all along, but now it does. And so I think this is a really great update in 11.2. I will say that if you put this into a template and you leave it open, it actually doesn't open when you create the project, you'll still have to open it. Another thing, is you can assign a keyboard shortcut to this inside of our key commands, edit assignments area. I have this loaded right now, I added control M. However, it's not a global receptor for key commands. So if I do that over here and this blue line that goes around my main window, that means that this is the window section that's in focus. 
If I click over to the library, you'll see the blue line goes around the library and that's now receiving focus. So if it's in there, I can control M and that will open it up. But if I have the focus over in the main window and push control M, it doesn't do it. So it's not really great to assign a key command because you'd have to actually make sure you're in the library. And if you're already gonna click over there, you might as well just click and open it like that. And then it stays open for the rest of the time you're working in that session. Okay, I hope this makes sense. I think that this is a great addition and a great way to work. I hope that if you're loading a lot of things in the library, you'll consider what that might do for you in terms of the power of being able to filter what things get loaded from the patches and which things get preserved if you already have something and you're just gonna load a patch on top of it. Okay, hope this all makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And um, if you have any other features you'd like to make videos about, then let me know and we'll work on those too.